I was just editing the video from yesterday and it's such a bummer. Right when I got into the site, there was actually a red fox that ran up within about 10 feet of me and then basically circled the camp. And I was videoing and I'm like, oh cool, animal. And for whatever reason, my phone choked on the video after about two seconds. So I'm headed for Grand Lake right now, and I actually spent a fair amount of time uh, while I was in the hotel and a little bit yesterday trying to figure out what the heck was going on over there. Because basically, the trail goes out and around, and there's an orange cutoff. And there were notes about, oh, it's closed, oh, it's open, but you have to get a permit. Oh, to get a permit, you have to have a bear can. And it looks like I finally figured it out. And to do it from this side, basically going southbound, I have to come in, everybody's supposed to road walk down to this visitor center near Grand Lake. At which point I could get a permit, walk the rest of the way into town, get a bear can, take the shortcut cut off back up to the red line, and then come back around on the red line. And uh, that's officially hit the, it ain't worth it for me. Um, it's also in a burn area. I would, like I said, I'm kind of bummed because it goes through Rocky National, Rocky, Rocky Mountain National Park and uh, goes up to 4,000 feet, but I, I can't burn that, especially after losing that day in Steamboat Spring. I have seen a few comments from people that successfully ran the closure and a few from people that went back there and then at least one set of hikers ended up apparently getting ticketed slash escorted out. I, I'm not going to do that. If it requires a permit, I'm going to get a permit. So, is what it is. Onward to Grand Lake, and then uh, I have a post office box to pick up, and then I'll be on to Breckenridge. So that storm last night pretty much fizzled. I had wind, and it uh, sprinkled on me for the last hour or two. But there was never any thunder or lightning or heavier rain. I believe the forecast said stormy for three days or so. So I may have more chances here. So one of the things I find very interesting out here is kind of the long distance hiking mindset because it was something I didn't have any idea about when I started. I kind of assumed, okay, the start would be hard. And then, I mean, once I get a thousand miles in, I'm going to be in the best shape of my life. It's going to be great. And you do get in a lot better shape, but uh, there are a lot of other factors. Uh, the mental game is actually kind of the biggest thing out here. And I think just the will to continue going, continue suffering, etc., has been the number one thing I've seen take people off trail. Especially because it's not just the willingness to work hard or anything. Uh, it's, it's the monotony. And I have had people get really angry with me in comments for describing days as monotonous out here. But it's one of those things where if you talk to anybody who's done a long distance hike, they go, oh yeah, yeah, of course. Because I mean, look at me now, I've been out here almost 80 days. I'm maybe halfway done. And there are days like yesterday where I was just on a paved road and then a dirt road like this. There wasn't any big overlooks, there wasn't anything big to look forward to. It was just a day. I listened to audiobooks to kind of keep myself sane out here, but there are some days where you just don't want to walk. And I start getting grumpy about the audiobook. It's not interesting enough, it's not moving fast enough, etc., etc. And I just can't hit that state that I really need to be in, which is okay, I'm walking. Right now, I'm going to be walking for the next 12 hours. I just need to be okay with that and not be watching the clock, which is easier said than done this late in the game. At least with over 1,500 miles in, I'm no longer afraid of kind of failing out early. <clears throat> I haven't had it happen on any of the long, long trails, but I'm always kind of afraid that I'm gonna put all this effort into coming out here only to make it like 100 miles and then something happens and I have to quit. Or on the ECT, I was afraid that I was gonna get that burnout I've seen on some people and that I wouldn't want to go on. And I've met a good number of people that hit a point that they just don't want to do it anymore. You know, it's, uh, I know that I'm committing the next couple of months to being out here. It's going to get increasingly kind of uncomfortable. It's going to get cold, which that kind of sucks to me. Uh, 
but I have a goal that I really, really want. Sometimes people, they want to do the trail, but once they get out here, they realize, they realize what it actually takes and it's just not worth it. Sometimes, you know, they had absolutely no idea. Saw a lot of that on the AT. For me, when I start to get run down, I find myself having a harder and harder time getting out of the tent and working as hard. Like this morning, you know, it's almost eight o'clock. I was up 4.35 o'clock and could have got started earlier. It, I just kept finding excuses to stay in the tent in comfort for a little longer. Because let's be honest, a way to describe through hiking is, you know, intentionally depriving yourself of, you know, food and comfort for long periods of time in the name of doing something awesome. And don't get me wrong, I really do enjoy being out here. There are almost always periods throughout the day where I just feel really happy, I get a good view, something like that. If you see a uh, video clip of just a pretty set of trees or an overlook, that's usually me just going, oh, this makes me happy and, you know, wanting to capture it and remember it. But those, those uh, are sometimes few and far between. And my videos are typically, you know, eight to 15 minutes for 12 hours of hiking. So I'm uh, condensing a whole hell of a lot of monotony. That was partially why my mileage dropped and I was doing more town days towards the end of the Eastern Continental Trail. I was just tired. I, I was having a hard time driving myself as hard, you know, hiking into the night, hiking early in the morning, especially when I was on those road walks up in Canada, which were beautiful, but I was getting rained on and they were just long. And also northern end of the AT, where I just started feeling super tired. And all of a sudden I'm having to do the wildcats and all these, uh, you know, steep bits. Maine felt rougher than kind of the entirety of the rest of the AT, I think. So plus side of me being <clears throat> so goal oriented is I know I want to be out here. I uh, have yet to ever seriously consider quitting one of these. I've been afraid I might be forced to due to injury, etc. But, you know, I, I came out here with a goal and I want to complete that. The harder part is just not knowing if I'm going to be able to do that successfully. I've basically been pushing as hard as I'm able on this entire trail. And, you know, the weather window could uh, screw me here. It's very hard to do a red line or a near red line of the CDT um, and not have, you know, winter conditions blocking off the mountains on either side, unless you're willing to flip-flop or something like that. But that just doesn't speak to me. I like doing the uh, A to B end-to-end -end hikes. And I mean, I'm gonna be really bummed if I don't get to see the other monument uh, this season. It's not like that will invalidate how awesome this has been or, you know, the adventure, the accomplishment, etc. But again, it's a goal and I want to make my goal. About the only thing I can do is just try and, you know, take advantage of whatever comfort when I can get it. <clears throat> Fortunately, it does look like I'm going through a few more town options now that I'm down in Colorado. And, uh... So hopefully I'll get to do more hotel nights, which they just make you feel human again, having a shower, et cetera. I really enjoyed, you know, that 18 day stretch without having to go into civilization through the Bob, et cetera. But you saw how much happier I was uh, yesterday after getting to eat, be warm, dry sheets, shower, et cetera. The other reality is I just don't find this easy worth it it's awesome i love the feeling of progress and you know having a goal ahead but it takes a lot of work every single day coming out and walking i don't particularly feel like walking for 12 hours today through rain and along uh, atv roads but that's my job today so yeah it's already sprinkling and looks like the weather has the potential to get kind of rough I'm actually up at 1,100 feet right now, if you can believe that.
Today is off to a good start. It is bloody cold this morning. Okay, that I would have totally missed without that sign. So today is basically mostly high and dry with about eight to 10 mile water carries, which that's no problem. However, right around the mileage where I'd want to be stopping, there is a big steep climb up above 12. So I'll have to see what the weather's doing later in the day. That would be a llama. Oh, llamas. I have rain pretty much all around me. No thunderstorms for the moment. If there is, I'm gonna have to hunker. I am amused by the name back here. So I've got sunlight for the moment, but it's been raining off and on. And unfortunately, I just dropped way down. Oh, so I can climb back up. Uh, the peak up ahead is 12,000 and change. Gonna have to see what the rain's gonna do, because if I get any hint of thunder, yeah. Well, damn. I keep hoping this is gonna clear up because otherwise I can't get my daily miles in uh, if I don't wanna go over this uh, peak up ahead, which I think I just heard thunder. So that's the high point I'm heading for, though it's already 5.30. I don't know what the weather's gonna do, so I may end up camping before. I have enough water to do it in the morning if I need. So it's six o'clock, it's feeling a little pissy to try and get up and over that peak. Fortunately, that summit is 1.5 miles ahead, and uh, I'd have to come down in the dark. And it doesn't sound like the trail's going to be trivial, so probably better do it in the morning. And hopefully, this stuff isn't going to be hitting me anymore. Not a big fan of stopping, you know, before it's dark or uh, at only 20 miles, because I'm only 20 miles in, but. Uh, it's four miles until I, where I think I can camp, and that includes 1,000 feet of gain, so there's no way. I'm probably up top right around when it's dark, and then I gotta make my way down. And that summit's been covered in clouds and rained on off and on. There are apparently options to camp in those trees, but it sounds pretty bad. Uh, this looks like maybe there'll be a possibility. Okay, a little bit rocky, but I found something that worked. Hopefully I'll be protected enough if the storms uh, over the other ridge start hitting me again. Uh, I am a little chilled after being rained on all day. Basically, I don't think more than an hour went without a uh, storm coming over. So I'm ready to climb in and get warm. Home sweet home for the night. <laughs> 